Hey, good afternoon. Steve Mathis here. And I'm out uh, in the forest today. Uh, I'm kind of doing a review, sort of, of the uh, Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens today for wildlife photography. And I kind of give it the quote review because it's not a complete review, but uh, it's, it's more of an update on my experience with the lens because it's changed <laughs> recently. Um, I've owned this lens for quite a while now. And in the past, it's, uh, I, I haven't liked it very much. You know, everything I read and hear about it is how wonderful it is. Uh, and specifically, it's super sharp throughout the entire range and at all apertures. Uh, it's got excellent vibration reduction. Uh, it's reasonably lightweight. Uh, it certainly depends on what you're used to carrying around, obviously, but uh, it's a great lens, super versatile range. Um, and so for a wildlife photographer, it's super affordable too. Um, but so for a wildlife photographer, it's really an ideal lens. And a lot of people uh, have come to that conclusion as well. And I just haven't had that experience with the lens. So since I've owned the thing, um, I've found a couple of big drawbacks to it. Two, two that I've had a real problem with that have prevented me from loving this lens. Uh, first off was image quality. Um, anything wide open at f5.6 was unacceptable image quality for me. Um, when I stopped down to f8, things got really nice and it was acceptable. Um, you know, that's a pretty big limitation. An extra stop of light is a huge deal. So uh, I just wouldn't shoot this lens unless I could stop it down to f8. And that's that's a big limitation. Part two of the, the problem that I had with this lens was tracking owls in flight. So I've found that the autofocus system really struggled with an owl, like if it's perched and then it's taking off, that initial kind of movement going from a static subject to takeoff, and you get a lot of really interesting photos during that takeoff shot uh, with beautiful wing positions and real dynamic kind of movements and things. And so those are pretty important to me. Uh, I shoot uh, great gray owls as much as I possibly can. And so having that um, autofocus speed to be able to catch that initial movement of an owl coming off of a perch uh, and tracking it as it goes down to the ground and catches its prey or misses or whatever. Super important to me in the woods. And it's usually dark in the woods, so that's it's a very demanding environment for an autofocus system. Uh, and I recognize that. And, uh, you know, being an f5.6 lens, uh, you could say, well, what do you really expect? And, you know, I, I don't necessarily hold that against the lens. I just feel like that's not one of its strong suits. Um, so... Uh, anyway, those have been the two problems I've had with the lens for the year or so that I've had it. I've actually sent the lens back to Nikon uh, once for an autofocus update that I hoped would help with that lens, a firmware, or with the uh, autofocus tracking problem, the initial kind of movement. Uh, there was a firmware update, uh, and at the same time I asked them to address the image quality issue. Uh, the lens came back. Uh, the autofocus was better, but in a different way. It still had the same kind of lag in catching up with the bird. Uh, once something was kind of moving consistently at a, at, a, at a rate of speed, the lens seems to track it just fine. But it's that kind of um, acceleration and deceleration that the lens seems to have a problem with. Um, but anyway, so then I sent it back to Nikon a second time just getting frustrated with it going, geez, everybody loves this lens. And I see images that people are making with this lens that are super sharp and excellent. And my lens can't do that. You know, I have lenses that'll do that. And uh, this isn't one of them. <laughs> so I sent it back again. They sent it back. Um, if they had, I don't know what they had fixed, but it, same thing. It wasn't working. So finally I got in touch with a manager at Nikon professional services and uh, kudos to her. She, she finally um, looked at some of the images that I had taken with the lens and uh, kind of confirmed it. Hey, you're, there's something wrong with your lens and we'll get it fixed for you. So I got the lens back from them and it, it had a new lens element. I don't know which element, but it got a new lens element and a new VR unit. And I'm happy to say I've had it now for a couple of days. 
uh, it seems to be working much better. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, I haven't had a chance to get this thing out and shoot some owls yet to kind of test that autofocus acceleration deceleration problem that it had in the past. Uh, I'm frankly expecting that to still be here. I, I think that's just part of the lens of the design and that it, it just has a problem with that, uh, which is fine. Uh, I can kind of work around that and use a different lens if I know that's what the limitation is. But I did get a chance to shoot some grizzly bears yesterday, and I'm happy to say that all of those images were really sharp, whether I was shooting them at f5.6, f8, f11, whatever, the image quality is drastically improved on this lens since it came back from Nikon repair. So, uh, my hope today, I'm out in the forest looking for great gray owls, and it's kind of a long shot, you know, finding owls, like, uh, you know, I might find one today, and it would be awesome if I did, and I might not, uh, and I'll still post this video either way, and I'll kind of give an update uh, once I get an opportunity to really try out the autofocus again and um, see how that's doing. But in the meantime, uh, bottom line is the lens is much more usable now that I can shoot it wide open at all focal lengths and know that I'm going to have really good image quality. I'm going to go out and <laughs> do my best to find an owl today. Uh, I'm shooting this on a tripod today. I like to run around this thing handheld and run it, you know, just off a strap here. But between with having the video camera with me, it's it's so much stuff to carry around that I wanted to be able to set this down and talk to the camera and have a, a tripod here for some stability. Uh, so, anyway, that's the long version of what I'm working on today, and I will get back to you soon, hopefully with a report of an owl, or two, or a dozen. Unlikely. Uh, but definitely, hopefully with some thoughts, more thoughts on the autofocus system, and how the lens is working. So, see ya in a little bit. Okay, so it's a couple hours past the last time I stopped to make a little video. And I'm on my way back to the car. Uh, actually, I just got done shooting a great gray owl, so uh, everything worked out perfect this evening. Um, I would have loved to have had it be a little more active in hunting, so I could get more opportunity to test that autofocus kind of initiation, where the bird is like leaping off of a perch, uh, that in the past the, the lens, the 200 to 500, has struggled with. Um, I only got one of those opportunities tonight. I had another takeoff that was mostly sideways. Uh, it kind of went off to the right there. And um, it nailed those. So uh, I'm shooting on a Nikon D850 with group area autofocus. And I find that to be fantastic for this situation of owls in flight. And I have several lenses that will nail it for sure. Uh, this lens is kind of still a a work in progress, but it nailed the one where it wasn't coming straight at me, and then the one time where it came straight at me, it missed just a little bit. So instead of being right on the front, you know, the bird's face, front, the, the most forward thing coming at me, it's it's missing. It's just lagging a little bit. So the uh, the eyes are a little bit out of focus, and like the wings are in focus. And then it takes a few frames, and then the autofocus seems to catch up once the bird is kind of in a consistent velocity and it'll track it really well and uh, so that does seem to be a problem so bottom line uh, for the Nikon 200 to 500 for me and my style of wildlife photography uh, now that I got it back from Nikon and it appears to be fixed it is uh, really sharp and looks really nice uh, autofocus was very accurate uh, and consistent, it just misses on that one particular situation that I've uh, been able to identify. So uh, I'll use it without hesitation at any aperture, any focal length for I think any subject except a an owl or a bird of any other kind that is going to be doing real quick stop start stuff. It seems to just lag a little bit uh, on initiation of movement. Uh, I hope that helps with any questions anybody out there has with the 200 to 500, but it's been a long road for me with this lens trying to get it to even work to the point where I'll take it out at all. And now definitely, like, it's going to be an awesome lens for 
bears and elk and moose and just a general hike around lens. So everything except owls coming off of their perches seems to be, uh, it's doing a great job for me. So uh, anyway, wanted to give an update on that lens and uh, give it a super recommend with that one caveat. So hope this video was helpful in some way. And I hope I didn't ramble on too long, but I'm sure I did, so I apologize.